Thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. If you want to design and build a beautiful website, you can do it all in one place with Squarespace. Guys, the whale tail is leaving today. I know it'd be more than a moment, but would we be a waste of time? I know I like it when you hold me, but do I want to call you mine? I swear I'm not trying to lead you on. I promise I'm a <laughs> Come in. What? I've never seen this before. <laughs> Yay. I'm a whale tail. This is where the whale happened. Yeah, it got taken yesterday. Oh, wow. It got taken from me. Yeah. I don't want to see it. I'm still nowhere closer to saying what we're not. Do I like you? Or do I like the attention? Do I like that you see me when no one else does? Do I like that it's easy to figure you out? If I can have you now, then easy is what I'm about. I think you might be. Are you a good boy? Are you, Are you a good boy, my love? <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Oh, okay, okay. So I've been keeping you. Hello. <laughs> I wish I could tell you. So conflicted, I can't tell you the truth. I'm trying to find Cupid, so it's my heart of steel. But all these bows and arrows still haven't revealed. If I like you, or if I like the attention, if I like that you see me when no one else does, if I like that it's easy to figure you out, if I can have you now, then easy is what I'm about. Do I want? Oh my god. <laughs> Hello cutie. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, that's cool. You're gonna run out of feet. <laughs> Gentler than the sheep. The sheep are very ravenous. No, oh, hello. Is he a soft shot? Sean, what happened? It robbed me again. You got to stop bringing the paper bag so close. I was going, hi. hi. Yeah, well, I'm telling you to focus okay. on the paper bag. Go, go. Oh, look how it walked. <laughs> Hair is so pretty. It looks like wind's hair. Yeah, wind, it looks like your hair. <laughs> Sean, I don't think they want your food. Oh, like, he gets to eat fresh, Alpaca. fresh food, like and then yours. Has... So with cereal, you want oatmeal. Sometimes you do want honey crush. It's like having lettuce or off stale crispy no, lettuce. No, it's like having kale or kale chips. They're different. No, this is not like oil fried and like nice and tasty. They don't know what that tastes like. They don't know what that tastes like. Do them, it's like. No, they're like, this tastes like I'm when the grass is dead. Flower time. Oh. No, Sean, don't you do that again. They think they're smarter than me. They've already done it twice. <laughs> Hello. Hey, is that you? Are you just feeling a bit sad? Don't say any spoilers, I haven't seen it. Oh, never mind. I want to cuddle it. I feel like it wants to cuddle us. My life's a mess. I have so much to update you on, oh my god. Anyway, I need to clean my living room and while I do so, I'm gonna give you some life updates because I had a severe asthma attack. Basically, I have to go to the ER, which is the long story short. I had had a throat tickle previously, which went away. And so I thought I was all good. I had a day with Nate because it was his last day in Sydney. He's in Hawaii at the moment. Basically, like, I couldn't breathe. We did like 12,000 steps and when I'd walk up steps, or towards the end of the day when we'd walk, I couldn't breathe well. And the last time I had this feeling was when I was in high school and I had a chest infection. Like, it's like here to the bathroom and I can't breathe. That's weird, right? 
So I knew that something was wrong, but I thought I had a chest infection. So I was at home, we're gonna go to the chemist. He's like, can we just get some stuff for like, what we think is a chest infection. They were like, oh, you should probably see a GP. This doesn't sound good. But he had bought all the chest infection stuff, so I was taking my cough syrup, you know, rah, rah. I was taking my Ventolin because it seemed to help a little bit, but I had done it a lot that day. And turns out, PSA, do not overtake your Ventolin because you can overdose on Ventolin. And I didn't know that. And I think the reason I didn't know that is because like I've had asthma my whole life. And for me, when I have asthma, I take one puff and then it's gone. I had a tightness in my chest from my heart rate being too high, but I thought it was asthma, so I kept taking my puff up. Ventolin raises your heart rate, so it's like not a good idea to do that. I didn't realize, like I didn't see the signs, I didn't know. After the chemist said that we should probably go see a GP, I booked an at-home GP, which is covered by Medicare. Thank you, Australia. We waited a few hours. I thought I, st I still at this point thought I had a chest infection. And then the doctor comes. He takes his stethoscope and he puts it on my back to listen to my lungs. He listens to my wheezing and my breath moves. And this and then this has been four hours of me like with my arms like this, Robert's stroking me because I'm so overwhelmed and I can't breathe. I'm like crying because I'm like, why can't I breathe? This is very scary. The doctor's like, this is not a chest infection. This is asthma. I was like, that's really weird. He's like, you need to go to the hospital. And I was like, okay. And in my mind, hospital and like ER is different. Cause I'm in the emergency room and he's like, yes. And at that point I like burst into tears just because I felt silly and also scared that I didn't realize how serious this was. Like I felt like, oh my God, could, could I have died if I didn't? Cause like, I, like calling the GP was just like, should I do this? But I'm so glad I did, obviously. The doctor felt so bad. He's like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. He's like, don't worry. I'm like, no, no, it's not like you. It's just like, I'm just scared. I felt like so ashamed afterwards for starting to cry because like I made him feel bad like that, for the way that he delivered like the news or whatever. He's like, you need to call an ambulance right now. But Rock and I are just like, oh, we're like, we kind of are close to the RPA, which is like the nearest hospital. So Rock, it just drove me. I could not breathe in the car. And I was already, I was scared because I didn't know how serious it was, but now I knew for sure it was serious because this person's telling me to go to the ER. We get there, we have to do all the COVID check-in, of course. I already done two rat tests. I didn't, which were negative. Um, and then basically we had to, um, the woman was like, she can go in and start signing in. You can do this for her. So thank God, because I was like panicking. I was like, <sighs> and then I went to the front desk asking for my Medicare card. I pull out all my cards. I can't find my Medicare card. I'm freaking out, which is making me more stressed and panicky, which is making my breathing even worse. I run out to rocket. And also, by the way, at this point, going to the bathroom makes me breathless. So running out is like making it much worse. Like the way that I was breathing because I couldn't breathe. It, it felt like it was just like a panicking. So when she was like asking me a question, she was like a bit um, short, which is fine because like she would have to deal with this shit all day long. But then when I gave her the note from my GP, which is like, this is what's happening. And then she's testing, she, she then goes to test my heart rate. And then she's like, get in this wheelchair. And she pushes me straight into the yard. She's like, I'm gonna bring it here because you can get seen faster. And like we go past all these beds with like people in them. And it's so sad because like all these old people that like lying down that look like really like not in a good place. Are like alone and it makes me so sad because like they shouldn't be alone anyway this nurse comes and helps me and it's so sweet calming me down he's like <laughs> slapping my hands because i have to do like a blood test but i got really small veins i always have a problem with getting blood drawn so he's like slapping each hand he can't find anything the doctor comes over he's like you're gonna have to find this person's vein because they can't find it they're giving me ventolin i'm taking like so many puffs of ventolin this other thing taking steroids like all of this stuff is being administered. And then meanwhile, they're just trying to find my veins. They're looking in my arms. I've got eczema though. So I've got like tiny veins and like thick skin because of my eczema, like slapping me all over. And then um, the doctor can't find my vein. Like they're trying, they're trying, they're trying. They've got me like, they've got the thing on and they're like, push, 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 push. And I'm doing this, I'm doing this. They still can't find my veins. They move me to another area. They are doing my swab tests. They're taking photos of my lungs, all of this stuff so that they could test to, to make sure what it is asthma and there's nothing else. Basically this younger doctor, I don't know if it's a student doctor or something like that, but he's in charge of now doing my blood. And he's sitting there like 10 minutes trying to find my veins. And they're like, you're going to have to do an ultrasound on her arm to find her veins. <laughs> so like, he, first of all, it's freezing cold. He's doing this and I'm like, what is that? That's disgusting in there. Like I wish I didn't look like, why did I look? It's so gross. He's like pushing down and I can see like the artery closing. He's like, there's a big vein. So anytime we go to the hospital, I'm going to be like, it's in here. We don't have to check in. My hands are all bruised from like them like, digging around with a needle trying to find blood because he did try to take it from my hand initially but he could not get enough blood from it he's like it is this is a big one but it keeps moving around I'm like what do you mean is it like evading the needle or something anyway so basically it's a nightmare to get blood out for me but they put like the catheter thing i think that's what it's called so that they can like put steroids put like fluids all this shit in it stays in my arm after that point rocket came in 
and he took this photo. <laughs> he was very scared. Um, I think he was just relieved he could be in there now because he had asked many times and obviously like I'm not going to demand that he comes in especially when there's so many people by themselves like when he saw me he was like his face was just like really like he just looked like his face had dropped so poor sweetheart after that after the sc scans oh my god Tucker. basically after they finished all the scans and stuff they'd move me to another section and they did have to scan my heart because when I took the Ventolin Tucky, no. When I took the Ventolin, my heart rate was like, it would be like, beep, 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 because my heart rate was, was going above like 125. Yeah, anyway, they moved me into this other room and Rocket stayed with me. The nurse was incredible. Nurses rule. If there's nurses that are watching this, thank you for what you do. Like, it honestly made the experience like so much better. Feeling like heard and feeling like you understood like what I was going through. And also you being so friendly. Like the nurse that I had, I think her name was Holly. She was so friendly. She was so empathetic. She... She made me feel heard about like my fears and like the context of what was happening. It was like in contrast, like I know that doctors are busy and everything, but when they come in and they're just like blah, you're like, do you understand like my exact situation? But like my nurse felt made me feel so heard because my my body had been tight and like tense all day because I couldn't breathe. Like my back was in such pain. She gave me like a heat pack, which really helped. Made me reassured in like a really s scary situation because I'd never been to the ER before. Anyway, so if any nurses are watching, know that what you're doing is important. If you have any resources for like where we can donate, especially for Australian nurses, please let me know how we can advocate for your like rights and how you can get pay rises. Blah, blah, blah. Obviously, I vote for I vote with parties that support healthcare and um, healthcare workers. But if any, if there's anything else we can do, please say. I was in the ER and then I had to rest, so I was been sleeping and like living basically on the couch, which is why the living room is such a fucking mess. Okay, many PSAs. Don't overtake your Ventolin because you can overdose. If you feel like something's wrong, go to the hospital. Anyway, so that's one update. The other update is that we'll be moving soon in a month. I bought an apartment. I've been like saving my whole life. Or like, I've been saving a lot. Like I'm a, I'm a saver and I've always, like I really love stability. Like this is like stability for me, but I don't know, we'll see. Now with like a possible recession. <laughs> But um, I'm really proud of myself. Packing the house down is something that's going to happen. I'm not sure if it's going to happen in this vlog, but I just wanted to update you all. One thing I have appreciated is like kind of being forced to rest because I don't really do that. Like I don't stay home and just do nothing ever. So I kind of had to do that the last couple of days. And my skin, I don't know if you can tell, my skin is so good right now. If I don't have eczema, I have quite good skin, but um, I always have eczema because I'm always stressed. Apparently, you'll be able to see when my eczema is really bad, like when my skin is really bad, it means that I'm overworking and it means that I'm stressed because when I'm stressed, it just comes out. I've been home, it's been so nice to spend time at home, be kind of bored because I've been so bored. Like I kind of just want to go to the studio, but I, I don't want to go there because it's kind of like a commute and I'm scared that I won't be able to breathe or something. I've vacuumed, I've cleaned. I literally got to the point where I was so bored that I was cleaning happily. That's really weird for me. I don't like cleaning. Now that we're preparing to move, which guys, I have to say like, I'm so excited and grateful that I was able to like buy an apartment in Sydney. Sydney is fucked. Sydney is like the worst. It's honestly one of the most expensive places to buy a house. But I've got family here, my friends, every, I've lived in Sydney my whole life. So it's like kind of not an option to not live here for me. What the point of this is that I have been forced to rest, which I would never really choose for myself because I find it kind of on the surface level really boring. I downloaded Unpacking, which is like a Switch game. I've like wanted it since I saw it on TikTok, but um, I downloaded it and I was like, this is kind of not that interesting. <laughs> it's very cute, but because like we are going to move in a month, I don't, I don't, I'm not excited about unpacking boxes because that is going to literally be my reality. And then Rocket was like, like there should be like robots that are connected to the Switch. So when you unpack boxes on the game, it unpacks your house. And I was like, that is so smart. But obviously like that's, that's like a pipe dream. So dusty. That is not good for my asthma. We should probably clean more. In my mind, our life is going to change when we move into this place that is literally ours. But I think it's kind of going to be the same actually. Wow, incredible. Should we go for a walk? Come on. Good boy. Good. Silly boy, can I have your arm please? Is that good? I'm done for you. 
people are gonna go for a walkies. Look at this bag, Planet Shane, who's someone that makes like crochet bag, made this chocolate bag for me, so cute. Such a cute gift. I've been keeping his treats in here. When we walk, I can just grab them and give him treats to just make him calm. If he gets spooked by like, he gets very spooked by like truck slash bus noises. But now he associates this with treats, so we have to hide this because otherwise he will rip it open. Yeah. You see? Yes. Now, I never just let him out because I don't want him to run at the door when we get in. So pick him up, walk him to the outside, and then put him down. You put me on the back burner when I should have been the head turner. I guess one thing that I never learned was how to put myself first. Even in my dreams, we are right for each other. From being a part of the scene, I think it's just a little too high. All of our, our my trip <laughs> like. Hello. Sweet Nathan, how are you? Sweet Nathan. I'm good, how are you? I'm worried about you. I don't want you to not, I want you to be relaxed when you come home. I'm relaxed when I come home. Yeah, because I feel like you're not, I feel like you're not going to be relaxed when you come home. And I'm like, that's the point. You have to go back to the ER? No, it's not fun. Honestly, when I was there, it was okay. Like, I felt safe because I was like, well, if there's somewhere where I'm going to die, it's, this is the best chance I have of not be dying. Well, can we go Birkenstock shopping together? Because now I'm sold. And I was like, I can't tell if it's so ugly or like a vibe. Picky, which I warned My whole life, where they would send me their reference photos. I, I do consider it, but it's. My phone died, so now I'm in silence. We love ceramics in this house. We currently don't have enough cupboard space in the kitchen which is something that I'm looking forward to when we move. Yeah, I just feel like it's gonna be nice to have a bigger kitchen. Our kitchen currently is very small. We'll probably like sell this cupboard. We kind of want there to be less stuff in the house, I think. I'm looking forward to being able to see what we include and what we don't. So I have tried to avoid doing this as I've done this like the last few days, but just sit on my couch. I am going to start um, finalizing Peachtober list. Because I'm so excited for it. I wrote a really rough list with like all 31 prompts, but I was testing some of them like um, the other day, which is just me like brainstorming. And if there's not enough ideas, I assume that other people, there won't be like a big range of ideas for other people as well. So I want to make sure I use prompts that are like inspiring. So I'm going through all of my 31 prompts and like confirming them or not. And there's been a few that I've been like, I don't want this to be a prompt. It's actually, this is the fifth year I'm doing Peachtober or like, it used to be FLP in October. And it's actually difficult to come up with words and stuff. So I just try and like look at my work and like the world that it lives within and what stuff could be prompted from that because I really think that there's a certain vibe to Peach Toba. It's def definitely wholesome, definitely cozy, definitely like colorful, like that kind of thing. I don't know how to explain it, but there's just definitely a vibe. And when going through, I've been like doing some sketching, trying to see whether the, the prompts that I've chosen will be good. It also helps me because during the actual month, I um, am so busy with like monitoring the hashtag and like sharing the work and all that stuff. It's like almost like a whole nother challenge. So I want to get ahead of like my concepts for this year, but it's like two birds, one stone kind of thing. The words that I'm drawing for may not be in the final list, so don't get too excited. Like I wouldn't go ahead and use them as like the words in the list because I may not use them in the list. Still have the key to my heart locked up. You said your feelings for me wavered. Well, baby, I say we take a wager. If you kiss me and it feels good, maybe this shouldn't turn to we should. Maybe it was stupid. Maybe we shouldn't do this. But I'd rather do it sooner than later. No. Not for babies. Not for babies. James, I'm sick of your game. When you said I shouldn't tell anyone about us How do you expect for me to go about this? Oh, James, you're just the same As every other guy, you swear you're not But you still have the key to my heart locked up 
Hello everyone! Oh my god, it's my first day back in the studio. I feel like good. But it's been like, I was probably a week off. I hope you guys can still enjoy this very chill video. I know it's not, it wasn't in the studio and it wasn't particularly very artful, as in full of art. I had to let you know what was going on, especially because we'll be packing the house. So I'm not sure what my next video is going to be because we're going to probably spend the next part of the month mostly packing, which is just like a few days now or, or something. But yeah, I just want to say hello. I want to say thank you for watching all the way through. And a big thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video as per usual. We love Squarespace here. We all know Squarespace is my favorite platform for building websites. I've tried a lot and they are my absolute fave. I love my website. I've had the same theme, which is supply for everyone that asks. It's a great minimalist theme, but also really good for having like an online store. I think it's really seamless in the way that your portfolio looks and the way that the store looks. If you're a creative that has no online space and only has social media i just think it's not enough so if you would like to try squarespace which i definitely recommend you should go to squarespace.com slash very little to get a free trial and 10 percent off your first purchase thank you squarespace thank you everyone for watching i'll see you again very soon like probably in the next week i'm not sure if it will be like a video of us packing or i'll just do like small snippets of studio stuff as I ease back into studio work and stuff so don't be worried about me I'm honestly fine now I, I have like a bit I'm like coughing a little bit but it's like really gone nothing in comparison to what it was a week ago like I feel really good so I just want to reassure you that I'm fine and yeah I'll see you very soon bye